Well, welcome, uh, welcome all, and, and uh, we uh, have today to speak with us is Melinda Iverson in uh, Dowsing the Etheric Body. The etheric body is an energetic bridge from the subtle body to the physical body. This talk is meant to serve as an introduction to the ideas and practices of dowsing the subtle body as energy medicine to assist the physical systems in both human and animals and intended to both advance for both advanced and beginning dowsers alike. Please enlighten us. Thank you. Oh, hello, everyone. Aloha. I'm coming to you from Honolulu, Hawaii. It's um, 9.30 a.m. here. I thank ASD for bearing in mind the time difference. <laughs> it is six hours. Yeah, um, are ready? <laughs> so we're, we're ready to go. Um, the salad and the... I think, Tick, we might want to mute everybody. Somebody's having salad. <laughs> Hello? Okay, I guess we're, we're going. So I'm Melinda Iverson in, um, as Tick mentioned, I'm, I was 2017 Dowser of the Year. I've been practicing dowsing for health modalities um, for 18 years now. I started my practice in 2003. And I started using a wire like this. This was a recording wire um, that came about through Robert J. Wade Mahaney. He is a sky dowser now. He passed in 2007. Um, and I never got to meet him, but I studied under a student of his. And so I work with this um, wire and I also work with the pendulum. So this work you can do either with whatever modality you have you know, if it's just your mind, hand dowsing, whatever it is you do, you can do it easily with this. So I'm just going to jump right in. Um, we'll save questions till the last and we'll get started if everyone's ready to go. Okay, share screen. Yay. All right, here we go. Dowsing the etheric body, the good old PowerPoint. So I'm going to ask everyone to kind of hang in there with me. <laughs> so we're going to, what, um, here's a little bit the essential ideas we're going to cover. What is the etheric body? How it affects the physical um, etheric body elements? What's involved in the etheric body? There are 12 um, major protocols and within each of those protocols some of them have multiple layers and then we're going to talk about experiencing the shifts uh, for yourself. So again, this is me. I've been studying trauma and release dowsing since 2003, which is when I started my practice. I have books that I've written, uh, five books on, they're all pretty much on dowsing to clear um, trauma. So you can find that on my website. Um, and I developed the IN method in 2011. Okay, so what is the etheric body? So this is an English term, etheric, and the context seems to derive from the theosophical writings of Madame Blavatsky. Um, and, but it was formalized by C.W. Uh, Leadbeater and Annie Besant, who were uh, part of the Theosophical Society. And this is from John Reynolds. So who, who were uh, Leadbeater and Annie Besant. And I love this picture of him. If you look at him, 1847, I, look at the twinkle in his eye. I thought, oh my God, I, I would probably want to know him. And this is Annie Besant. We'll get into a little bit about him here. He was originally from the Church of England and he was interested in spiritualism. He was actually a priest and he became interested in spiritualism and then he left uh, Anglicanism and went in for the Theosophical Society. I, I also have roots in spiritualism. That's where I started. I used to stand up in front of a congregation as a student medium and give readings without even a pendulum. I didn't even know pendulums existed back then. So I kind of went from just doing readings all of a sudden to using a tool. It was kind of funny to go backwards because usually everyone wants to go the other way. Right, and I took mediumship classes. Um, anyway, so in, he's written over 60 books and um, he and Annie Besant worked together. She was amazing, uh, a women's rights activist, also a Brit, uh, educationist, philanthropist. She was 
definitely involved in supporting the Indian self-rule, um, part of Gandhi's um, uh, definite, um, um, you know, what I'm saying, his, um, his uh, practice there and his um, wanting to get uh, freedom for India. Anyway, she was a prolific author. She, by the way, was the, um, the, the adopted mother of Krishnamurti. Krishnamurti was 16. She, he, they were living on the grounds of the Theosophical Society and she approached, he had lost his mother and she approached his father and said, I would like to be his guardian. And then from there, so she was with Krishnamurti um, until he left the society. So what is the etheric body? And I love this image. This is um, an image of the Holy Grail illustrated by Arthur Rachman in 1917. So the etheric body is a name given to the first or the lowest layer of the human energy field. So if I were to, um, this is my physical, I'm touching. If I were to go out about, you know, six inches or so, gosh, it's hard to show on this thing, about like this, you're running into your etheric five or six inches out. And then of course, if you're looking at it as sort of a 2D image, then you would say, you know, etheric, and then you would go out to um, mental, emotional, spiritual, you know, that falls and so on as you go outside of the body. So it's said to be in immediate contact with the physical, it sustains its higher bodies, and it's a bridge from the subtle body um, to the physical. Now, the thing about the etheric is there can be disharmony and disease in the etheric way before it reaches the physical. So you can actually catch it in the etheric or even the um, higher planes. Um, if you're of the belief that a lot of these um, disharmonies and diseases in the physical start at upper levels, you can probably see it at the spiritual, the mental, the emotional, all the way into the etheric. If you can, the idea is you want to clear those things before they get to the physical. But then of course, there's also this karmic concept too about life lessons and things like that. So we want to be aware of those things. This is um, the etheric body. Um, Alice Bailey. Um, Alice Bailey was also a wonderful woman. She was a theosophist and she actually coined the term new age. So um, she also was a writer of more than 24 books and was um, part of the, what we would call um, the enlightened um, Masters of Wisdom series, where you would find Blavatsky and Bailey. And so she wrote that the underlying human body in all of its parts is a vehicle or the vital etheric body is composed of these threads, you know, that interpenetrate the entire body and the nervous system and are in reality the acting, activating power of the nervous system. So keeping your etheric body in balance is going to help also calm the nervous system and the rest of the system. Okay, so here is etheric body physical in action. This is a, a picture of me with Sky Dowser Ed Stillman and his wife Carolyn, and this was in 2012. I received a telephone call, let's see, when was that? In... Um, 2000, I don't know, five years ago, let's see, six, six years ago, before my house burned down. So it was like 2000 and I don't know, 15. And it just so happened I had just finished with a client and Ed had called me and, and they were moving from Sedona, Arizona to Northern California to be with their family. And they were doing all this moving themselves and there were, you know, boxes everywhere throughout their house. And Carolyn had become so stressed out that she had gotten shingles. And if anyone's ever had shingles, you know how stressful that is and how painful that is. And so I had said to him, wow, you, you know, is it okay with you if I try this etheric body dowsing on her? And he said, yes. And oh, by the way, can you teach me how to do it? So unbeknownst to Carolyn on a conscious level, I sent um, Ed the chart that I work from and we started going through the protocols on the phone. He was in Sedona, I was in Glen Ellen and um, 
we're going through these dowsing levels together and all of a sudden Ed says, oh, wait a minute, I hear something downstairs, hold on. And it's the vacuum cleaner running. And he said that Carolyn was up and vacuuming and that she, she felt so good that she just decided to get up and continue with the packing and the cleaning. And she just felt like vacuuming. And both of us were just amazed and delighted. It was, it was just all of a sudden someone who could really experience this energy took it in and it was helpful to her. So we, we love that story. And thanks, Carolyn, for letting me share that story. Now, this brings up the term qualia. What is qualia? So qualia is an individual internal consciousness that cannot be documented or recorded. So as you know, in dowsing, there's a lot of qualia because we experience what we experience. Carolyn experienced what she experienced. That's her qualia. So we just go on that idea that the etheric body is quite subjective. Like Carolyn, some will be more receptive than others. And that's true with all of our health dowsing. So we just wanna bring that up to remember that, you know, these are conscious subjective experiences, but that doesn't mean they're invalid. They're validated because they are, they are our conscious experiences. So moving on, um, this work, uh, originally came from Robert J. Wade Mahaney, as I spoke earlier. Um, and I learned from a student of his. Most recently, when Ed Stillman passed on, he had sent me an original manuscript of Robert J. Wade Mahaney, which I had, um, had lost. Um, and when Ed passed away, I had asked Carolyn if she could find the manuscript. And she said, I'm sorry, I couldn't find anything, but she had sent me a box of files and at the very bottom of the box, <laughs> in a folder, it said, original manuscript, Robert J. Wade Mahaney. They're not available anymore, so I know he wants me to have this work and I know he wants me to um, share it with you. So here is what he says, the physical body is impacted by many levels and layers of the mind. This includes emotional belief systems as well as traumas and other life experiences. Now, Robert J. Wade Mahaney really focused on the physical, helping people with physical illnesses, um, but he was dowsing at all these other layers and he believed that these things started at a much higher level as well. And um, so, we honor that and we move on. So he says the etheric is supplying the physical system, which I know is true as well. And here's a photo of um, Pete Warburton, who's also a sky dowser. He was also a student of Robert J. Wade Mahaney's. Um, and this is at the 2010 West Coast Dowsing Conference. When I first started doing this work, a teacher of mine had said, you're not allowed to share this. You have to sign a document that says you will do non-disclosure. Well, in 2010, Karen Ashley Tippett um, paired me at a table with, of all people, Pete Warburton, who was a student of Robert J. Wade Mahaney, who said, oh, let me, let me share with you everything that I've learned. And so this is how this all came about, that I was able to go ahead and give this information without worrying about um, not using the, or violating the non-disclosure. So lucky me. Karen had the foresight to sit me next to Pete and we had all the same materials. It was wonderful. And he wrote a book called An Experiment in Dowsing and Self-Healing, which I have copies of in a PDF if anybody would like them. And he said that self-healing involves more than the physical body known to Western medicine. So there's a physical metaphysical structure, a psychic, right? Healing energies, etheric, astral chakras, meridians, mind, etc. So the reason I'm bringing this up is that there are more than one um, beliefs about this within the dowsing community that this etheric is very important. Um, this is an excerpt from a book I just finished called Dowsing the Etheric Body. Um, I know for a fact that a single element can actually keep someone from a much dire situation. One of these protocols, um, it's powerful enough to keep someone in health. So 
when used daily, it can assist in supplying your your whole system and harmony and balance. And what you begin to notice is you stay. It doesn't go out all the time. Once you're in that groove of your system understanding where it needs to be, then you it automatically harmonizes um, and you don't have to do this every day. But when it's out, you know it, you can feel it. So these are the etheric, uh, elements of the etheric body. Now, the first element of the etheric body is six subtle bodies. There's the etheric, astral, mental, causo, egoic, and soul. And those are broken down um, as the following. So the etheric body, when you douse etheric energy into the etheric body, it's good for brain fog, cramps, um, tissue imbalances, physical um, I know that if people have cramps, that's one of the first things I go to other than, hey, did you have your potassium? You know, this is also useful for muscle cramps is the etheric subtle body. The astral body, as you know, is the one with the cord um, made famous by um, that actress, uh, Shirley MacLaine, where she describes this cord and she's outside of her body. So that's the astral subtle body. It keeps you anchored to your physical. It's a vital energy center uh, to supply prana and life force to the physical. So you want to douse the astral as well. The mental is um, keeps you focused on what's happening. So when someone is mentally out of balance, there's this, it's like the mouse wheel squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> you repeat things in your head over and over. I should have done that and I didn't do that. And oh, I can't believe they said that. That kind of mental chatter is about the mental body in this case at the etheric level. The causal subtle body is the karmic aspects of it. So when you're working with the causal of the six, this has to do with the type of body you inhabit, what lessons you're learning, you know, what, what's happening with you at the karmic level. And um, now we get to the egoic subtle body. So the ego is really interesting because there is reverse ego. So there's not only the ego that says, hey, I'm all that in a box of, you know, Oreo cookies or whatever your favorite thing is, but the reverse ego says, I'm not enough. So you've got this, you know, want to find the balance between those two. And um, when it's out of balance, you know it because you've seen it in people, you know, the I'm not enough or, hey, I know everything this is one of the places you can go to to try and help um, mitigate and balance that of course there's many other things involved the soul subtle body which is the sixth one uh it's about faith you know it's about we know our heart beats you know we know we we breathe even when we're sleeping this is about um, influencing the physical and helping it heal. So we want to keep the soul subtle body in balance because it sets the standard for the rest of the systems. We want to be in faith. You know, our blood flows. We don't have to think about that. It happens. So those are very important. The next category is planets. Now, I do want to mention that when I douse the etheric body, I think of it as excesses and deficiencies. So it's either you either have, it's kind of like Chinese medicine when you're um, doing meridians, you either have too much or you have too little. So when we look at it as excesses and deficiencies, we have a tendency not to judge what's happening if we can see it in that way. Now, planetary energies in this chart from Robert J. Wade Mahaney, he says that um, every cell of our body, physical and non-physical, is endowed with these particular 14 planetary energies. Um, okay, so, and I have been doing this chart since 2003 and it is very effective. I came back to it uh, when um, more recently when Ed had called me, but, and I, and I realized how powerful it was as I became more proficient as a dowser, I recognized that these subtle bodies are really powerful. So these are the ones that he talks about, sun, Mars, uh, Mercury, Earth, 
Now, Titus is something else. Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, and Plutos. Now, <laughs> I could not figure out why he had four Plutos. It just did not make any sense to me at all. And what he had done was um, there are five moons for Pluto. For whatever reason, he decided the first four were more important energetically. So he called them Pluto two, three, and four. So not only, or the first three moons, sorry. So you have Pluto the planet, and then you have Pluto two, three, and four, which are the moon energies for Pluto. Okay. Titus actually is um, Tish, it's named after Titian, Titius, who was a German uh, mathematician, astronomer, and what he discovered was between Saturn, the planets of Saturn and I want to say Jupiter, there is an energy wave that goes between the two planets. And the distance has been measured and it's actually called the Titus Bode Law. And Bob had said that he couldn't figure out what was missing from these planetary energies until he discovered this particular energy that was the distance between Saturn and Jupiter. And it's called, and he named it Titus. Now I've worked with it, it works. Um, I don't know, you know how else to go about that, but I, I, he did it, he found it. Um, I have found it to work very well. So here's some of the um, ideas behind the planets. So you can look at the planets as almost correlating with the astrological aspects. So the source of the ego would be the sun, you know, what your intentions are, Mercury's the thinking, how we communicate, Mars is about our drive, our energy level, our approach to work. Um, Earth is the divine soul manifest within the body um, and the physical presence of our being. Um, and then Uranus, and then here's the Plutos I wanted to talk to you about. I'm not going to do all 15 here, but um, Pluto, originally Pluto, Pluto, by the way, is not in the Vedic astrology. Pluto wasn't discovered until after, uh, I think it was 1950s. So Pluto 2 is our energy drive, Pluto 3 is our inner wealth and guidance, and Pluto 4 being perseverance and how we maintain and stick with things. I have added the moon to this um, chart because I feel it's the feminine and it um, drives, it's the emotion in our lives and our feelings. So I felt that adding the moon was important. Now, dealing with pets. <laughs> So animals, I love this dog photo. Um, I have a dear friend who is a wildlife photographer and she actually mentioned to me, she uses the entire etheric body chart on animals. When I originally came uh, to this energy work, the sun, the earth and the moon were the only three we were using for animals, all animals. And if there was anything missing uh, in from those three, uh, the the uh, pet could really use it or the animal themselves. She has gone on to tell me again that she uses the entire chart. Um, I would say, you know, go for it, try it, see if it works. I've only ever used these, but, um, you know, she's the animal whisperer. Now, plants and trees also have um, detected these metaphysical structures in plants and minerals. You can also try this whole etheric body work on um, your plants, your trees. Why not? Right? Give it a go. The chakras we all are very familiar with. Helen S. Burmester uh, was also a, the a theosophical um, lady, and she wrote that all seven chakra centers um, are rotating wheels in which the life streams enter. The development of our consciousness is directly related to the activity of the centers within our etheric body. So again, referring back to the etheric body, we all know what the chakras are. However, Paramahansa Yogananda, I read, said that there were over 3,000 chakras in the body. We're only gonna use the, um, 
you know, the ones that everybody really kind of knows about the seven and, and, and you all know what these are, you know, the crown chakra, power and authority, the sixth, right? Inner wisdom and knowing the throat chakra, you know, that's your communication and self-expression. I don't need to do, you all know these. Fourth is the heart. Um, the third solar plexus is the willpower. Um, now the second chakra is about boundaries as much as it is about sexuality and creativity and the root chakra. Right now, many of us are in um, Kundalini awareness awakening and the root chakra is gonna be pretty activated um, right now for a lot of people. So just ride the wave. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention was if you're looking for excesses and deficiencies while you're dowsing the subtle body, so do they need more third chakra or less third chakra? Do they need more second or less, or do you just balance them either way? It's rare. In fact, I've never come across anyone needing less heart chakra. <laughs> I would as always say we need a little bit more of that. North sky. So North sky is akin to um, your joy, bringing about your inner joy, finding your true north. If you pair this North sky energy with the seventh or sixth chakra, it will help relieve the ideas of headache and sinus issues. And it can also be used to clear the pineal gland just at the etheric level if you're wondering. So North Sky is part of this um, protocols. South Sky being the opposite direction, it relieves more imbalances in the solar plexus and the diaphragm when um, paired with the uh, third chakra. It enhances harmony and willpower, and it helps one to really begin to understand that they're an agent of light and love. So we have North, sky, we have south sky, we also want to look at oxygen. Whenever I've had someone come to me who has um, disease in their system, there's usually a lack of oxygen uh, and often disease is perpetuated by the lack of oxygen. So it's really important we keep oxygen functioning in the whole system. Every cell in the body needs oxygen in order to function and it's easy to douse at this level. There's rays. Okay, there's seven rays. So the rays are um, from a book by Alice Bailey, and it, they were coined rivers of energy. There are seven rays that we want to look at. Um, the rays come into the system uh, at the levels that you can almost correlate with uh, chakras. So the first, um, we want to look at ray seven, and that is called right action at the seventh level. So if you look at the way Bob wrote it out, he called um, Ray Seven the solar deva, believe it or not. So if you look, the theosophists, theosophists say that there are millions of devas living inside the sun. And these are called solar angels or sometimes solar devas. Uh, there also can be regarded as um, composed etheric matter in the elemental, such as nature spirit. So uh, choosing the right action at the seventh level at the seventh ray is a mindful practice. Ray six is called cosmic consciousness. You seek reverence in all things. So I didn't put them all down. I'm just going to tell you there's seven of them and ray six is reverence. Uh, ray five is knowledge. Bob would call that planetary logos or earth logos or earth knowledge. It's our individual incarnations as being concrete physical beings here on planet earth. Ray four is the logos itself or called the word of God. Um, it's divine life itself. And um, so when we want to douse the logos, that helps us um, view any perceived conflict in a harmonious way. Um, Ray three is a higher mind. He called it the Holy Spirit. Um, what is the Holy Spirit? Well, the definition is God as spiritually active in the world. So if we can 
make sure that ray three is incoming right we have this active intelligence of being spiritually active in the world and then uh the sun is the second ray that would be s-o-n and not s-u-n um and that is about bringing wisdom into your system, being open for and dowsing uh, for higher wisdom. And then Ray One would be the willpower or called the Father, according to Bob. So dowsing these rays gives the recipient an opportunity to over, override non-beneficial um, ingrained and habitual behaviors. So we like to use Ray One a lot for any addictive um, behaviors. All right, radiation is the next thing on the list. So we all know that there's a lot of um, radiation emission. Tick, are you there? Hello? I wanna- um, Yes, I am. Uh, hi, I just wanna kind of stop because I feel like I'm just like chatty, chatty, chatty and ask if there's any questions because um, I feel like I'm just talking and um, I would like if anyone has any questions I'm available to answer them now, or we can just continue um, with the flow. Can we um, stop your sharing? Um, I can stop my sharing, yeah. If anyone has any questions oh, or- Group better, yep. Yeah, so you can either unmute yourself or um, just, they I can just continue. Raise your hand or the, make a motion. Oh, the, the PDF, right. So if you email me, I can send you a PDF of the chart. It's also um, in a book, you know, download a PDF of, for a book. Um, you can email Melinda at melindain.com and I'll, I'll be happy to share that with you. Um, I did a three hour workshop on this uh, very topic um, Thursday. So this is kind of the abbreviated version of that. Okay, well, I'm gonna continue if there aren't any particular questions. Alrighty, here we go. Oh, oh, Gail West has a question. Okay. Gail, go ahead and unmute okay. yourself. Where, where, where you mentioned your book? Um, e is it because I, I I went to Amazon and you're not in there, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's right. You have to go to my website. Uh, yeah. it's, it's on your yeah. website, and it's yeah. a lot of the stuff that you're talking about. In it's book. all in the book. Yeah, this is the this is the Cliff Notes version <laughs> of that. But I wanted to give you something to be able to douse right away. But the deeper explanations are all there, so. Um, on Melinda at Melindain.com, I can make it real easy for you. There's another question. I saw something in the chat. Let's see. Can you describe how you use your system? Can you share client examples? Uh, other than the example of using it with uh, Carolyn Stillman? Yes. So when I'm dowsing and I'm using my trusty rod or my pendulum, either one, um, what I will do is with a client or with someone, I will just douse to see, do, do, they, do I need to do an etheric body tune-up, yes or no? Do I need to do any of this at the etheric body level? Because I look at so many levels, I usually start with the monad and then I work my way down. So do I need to do any work at the monad, the mental, you know, the emotional, the etheric, the astral, uh, the physical? And if I get a yes to the etheric, then I go to this chart. Does that help? Okay. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Does that help? Okay. <laughs> so yesterday or... Thursday in the workshop, I did this complete chart on everyone in the workshop. I actually doused it for them and we learned how to do that. So you can learn this work, um, but again, this is like a 55 minute, it's an eight week course I'm trying to cram into um, 55 minutes. <laughs> so I wanna give you as much information as possible. So I'll go back to share screen and if anyone has a question going forward, Tick, please just, um, 
let us, we'll, we'll take questions as we go. How's that? Okay. Good enough. Okay. So we're going to go back to, so we did, so, so far we've done the subtle bodies, planetary energies, the chakras, north sky, south sky, oxygen, the rays, and now we're working on radiation. I had a, a client call uh, a couple of months ago. His mother was in the hospital. The first thing that came up, Spirit said immediately, was to negate the radiation. There was so much radiation that she had. Um, she had had x-rays, MRIs, CT scans, plus being in that environment, there emits a lot of radio frequencies. So I, I, in order to really understand radiation, I went to the dictionary and the physics uh, definition here is electromagnetic waves or some atomic particles um, which cause ionization. The energy is transmitted by radiation as heat, light, electricity, etc. So there's a higher volume of people who are subjected to these radio frequencies as we develop more and more new technology. So the higher risk of radiation contamination is there. Now, it can come from various places. You all know this, microwave ovens, handheld devices, Wi-Fi, X-ray scans, medical air travel, cordless phones, right? We all know that, Bluetooth devices, that kind of thing. Um, and these are measured on levels of radio frequency. Here's a chart that I found. This is artificial radiation versus natural radiation. Now, when I do long haul flights, um, I have to be very aware of this because what happens for me is if, I, uh, if I'm on a long haul flight and I don't set something up for myself before I fly, especially long haul, the natural radiation has a tendency to make me not feel so well when I land. And sometimes I have been very, very sick for a few days. So I have learned now to mitigate that before I get on the plane. Um, I also bless the plane from the nose to the cone. And I use a, a Tibetan, old Tibetan um, method, which involves all of these colors, by the way, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. So you run colors from the nose of the plane to the tail of the plane in these colors, and you also add white and gold. And then of course, I talk to all parts of the plane. I bless it. They say, thank you. Everybody's happy. We're all groovy. And um, I get to where I'm going safely and I don't have a radiation issue. Now this particular lady that I worked with had all the stuff on the left-hand side, the chest x-rays, the PET scans, the CT scans, everything. And you're constantly in that environment. If every, anyone has ever been in a hospital lately, I have with my um, mom and her open heart surgery, there's all kinds of beeping and you know, you're hooked up to all kinds of things. So keeping this um, neutralized is really helpful. Now, that being said, everyone has their own tolerance levels. You know, this is not a one size fits all. Some people are a little more sensitive to smart meters. Some people aren't, you know. It's just the way uh, our bodies are. And this yeah. gives, yes? Sorry. Oh, okay. And this gives us an opportunity to uh, mitigate and work with that in a non judgmental way because we all like to fly places and we all need things sometimes, you know, that modern medicine has to offer. However, the use of these um, protocols is the future. Dowsers, you are the future of medicine. I'm telling you this now, take it in. You are the future of medicine. This is where we're going. You can do this work. You can be so helpful for people. And I'm excited to share this information with you. Um, colors is the next thing on the chart. So colors, colors are frequencies of they're units known as angstroms. If you were to Google colors, you would see color frequencies known as angstroms. And these are expressed in visible waves of light and non-visible. So you also have the ultraviolets. In light waves, you have the x-rays, gammas, as well as the visible light spectrum like the rainbow. Now, 
the chart goes that I have, the one that I work with, starts at the ultraviolets and goes all the way down to 7,800 angstroms, which is in the reds. So when um, you use color, and I know sometimes when you get dressed, you might be attracted to a certain color. Some days I feel like wearing all white. Some days I'll wear magenta. You know, if you're open to that kind of idea, you'll know what to wear. I was guided by my team to at a conference many years ago. While I was packing, they said, please wear lots of reflective clothing. And when I got to the conference, I understood why. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of energies at these things. Um, so we will be led to wear colors that we may need or colors that others may need, right? Because we're all agents of, of, of self-healing for other people as well. So colors can re re bring calm, clarity, you know, open-heartedness, feelings of oneness. And, and I like to wear black too, you know, black is a great color. And if, in fact, black does all the colors uh, combined. So don't underestimate a color as being a valuable, potent healer. And when I douse these colors, I start with the ultraviolets and I go up. Now on my chart that I have, which I, um, the ultraviolet start at 2,500 and go backwards. So 2,500, 2,000, 1,500, and 1,000. You won't need to go any way above that. And then, um, then you would douse down in, in colors like the violets, reds, blues, greens, yellows, oranges. And so you would just go through each of those. And they're all divided by the angstroms of light for that particular wave of color. And you could probably Google that and find it, out, um, find it online as well. But don't underestimate colors, they're amazing. Number frequencies are also really powerful. So as energies of light, we know that everything has a frequency. I'm sitting in this chair, but it's actually all vibration, right? I mean, the yogis that could put their hands through walls all knew this. They knew that, that um, we were all part of this vibratory um, cosmic, uh, I don't want to call it soup, but <laughs> energy. And so as vibrate, vibrational frequencies can be found in everything, so too it can be found in the body. You can find number frequencies for the, all the organs, glands, bones, joints, as well when you look at the liver, does the liver need a color? I mean, you, this is a whole different way of thinking. Can you go into each of these parts of the body and see, does the um, liver need any subtle bodies? Does it need any colors or numbers or rays? And that's a level that I hadn't looked at before until someone brought it up in the workshop, uh, which I thought was quite brilliant because I've always looked at the system as a whole and then we just do all of these for everything um, and that'll accomplish everything. But if you get into the physical issues, at the physical level, you can apply these ideas of subtle bodies, planets, rays, colors, numbers, you know, at the organ level. And, in, and indeed, when you get to be where you're really understanding how to raise your vibration up into these um, above the fifth for sure, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, if you can get your vibe up that high, you can actually go into the organ as Harold McCoy could do, and you could talk to it and ask it, what's it's missing? What does it need? You know, what's the emotional um, content that's stuck in there? Does it need a color? Does it need uh, a river of energy, you know, a ray? And so you can really use this material in so many creative ways. And I, I know you all are gifted dowsers. So take this material and run with it, you know, make it your own. You know, I, I'm sharing this. I want you to share it. I want you to really get it and, and 
do what you can and experiment, you know, use number frequencies. Do they work with your animals? Do they work with your plants? In 2004, I met a man who traveled around in a camper van with his wife and they would go to towns and literally park the camper van and he would do number frequency readings for people. And he had a big bobber and he would, um, you know, I'm going to stop share for a second. He would have this giant bobber and he would stand in front of you and he would, the bobber would go up and down and he would douse the number frequencies that you needed for your body. And he would write them out on a piece of paper. So you'd, you'd get a piece of paper that would say something like five, seven, five, nine, three, four, eight, seven. And he would want you to repeat it every day for whatever condition you had in your physical body. He was amazing. And he ended up publishing this giant folder of which I had, which I don't have anymore, but um, that had number frequencies for everything, everything. He could, you know, give you number frequencies for glands, trees, you know, physical things as well as uh, plants and animals. And he was, he was really amazing. And it was the first time that someone had ever handed me a bottle of water and said, hey, this has the thyroid frequency you need. I want you to hold it, you know, for five minutes a day, twice a day. Uh, he, and so this is where I really got into this idea of understanding that number frequencies are very, very powerful. When Bob created, I'm going to go back to sharing screen. When Bob Can created. Wanda? Wanda? We yes. Have we have a question. Okay. okay. No. no. How do you, how do oh. you from, from um, Margarita, how do you neutralize uh, radiation? Some kind of a oh, protocol. Oh, sorry. Okay. So you just, add, uh, let me stop sharing here. Let me, I was sharing and now I'm going to stop share. So when I look at radiation um, in someone, I I'm, I'm first of all, as a dowser, the way that I would teach this to you would be time subject, you know, question, right? Time subject question. You have to keep all three of these things in your head. So the time would be now, the person, the person's name, and what you're dowsing. And then I would ask, um, you know, do I, it, do I need to douse or do, is there an uh, imbalance of radiation in that person's system? And my wire would give me a yes. I don't need to know where it came from. I don't need to know that it's from Wi-Fi or, you know, a, a, a radiation from the airplane. I don't need to know that. Te your team knows that. So all you have to do is ask, is there, an, is there an imbalance of radiation in the system? Because we all have radiation in our system. It's just a matter of it's excessive, right? So excessive is going to cause us harm. So then I would just neutralize that, right? With your pendulum, it would be a counterclockwise. Everybody knows that, right? You can neutralize it by running counterclockwise. Um, you're, I don't believe you're ever going to need to add radiation to anybody. <laughs> So I would just go neutralize and counterclockwise that. And then of course it comes to a natural stop. All of you that are advanced and professional dowsers know that your pendulum will automatically just stop. Does that help? Okay, I think that helps. I can't, I'm not hearing anybody, so. <laughs> it's pretty simple. It's very, very simple. Okay, we'll go back to here and we'll go back to sharing. Okay, so number frequencies. How do the number frequencies break down? So you're not going to go just from one to thousands. The way Bob had it broken down was, um, first of all, we already know everything has a frequency. And um, science has known for quite some time that things vibrate at their own personal frequency. That would also mean your liver, your kidneys also have their own vibrational frequency as well as your whole subtle body system. And, and emotions sustained over time can change our vibrational frequency, right? We know that. If we're in anger all the time, what does it do? It changes our vibrati vibratory frequency. Or if we're in joy, right, it raises it. So he, the way he did these number frequencies was he did them from zero to 1333. Where he got 1333, I have no idea, but I know it works. 
So the way the number frequencies are doused, and it will go from 0 to 1334, is you douse the in between the 50s. So you from 0 to, to 1300 would be 50, 150, 250, 350, and so on. And you would just ask, you know, does this person have a need for number frequencies? Yes. And then you can say, is it, you know, do I need to add 50, 150, 250, 350, 450 until you get to 1300? So as it says here, number frequency is 50 all the way through to 1300. Then the next sequence is increments of five. And he did 305, 310, uh, 305, 315, 320, 330, you know, so you can see them here on the PowerPoint, 305, 315, 325. And then the last set of numbers were just straight, 1331, 32, 33, and 34. Um, they could be just arbitrary, I don't know, but they work is all, uh, they absolutely work. Now, I know that this man that I worked with years ago who had the bobber I was talking about had a frequency for sudden oak death in trees. He had a number vibrational frequency. I don't have it, I don't know what it is, but someone um, who specializes in these things as a dowser would probably be able to tell you. Um, so number frequencies we know are important. You just ask, is there an imbalance or is there a need? And then you would just douse them through. Okay. Meridians, that's the next one. So we've gone through the six subtle bodies, planetary energies, rays, north sky, south sky, oxygen, radiation, colors, numbers, and now we're to meridians. Now, the meridians are the flow of qi corresponding. Meridians are um, Chinese medicine, if you will, um, Japanese medicine as well, linking specific organs in the body. So when there is a pathology or an imbalance, it's often registered as pain or discomfort along the meridian. This is the idea of the excess and, and deficiency. It's not necessarily the organ itself, but the pathway to the organ. There's either too much or too little. So for example, if someone's about to have a heart attack in Chinese medicine, the way they see this is they'll feel the pain along the heart meridian, which runs along the left side of the body. And that's the warning sign that there's something wrong there. So again, we're looking at excesses and deficiencies in the flow of qi within the physical body. And the meridians that we're gonna look at are the, um, I'm gonna stop sharing here. Well, we have stomach, spleen, heart, small intestine, liver, gallbladder, pericardium. The pericardium is the sac that goes around the heart. Stop share. And bladder, lung, and large intestines. You also have two meridians that are not associated with organs. And those are the conception and the governing. And they run, conception runs down the, from the pubic bone up here, and the governing vessel runs all the way up from the back up all the way to the top. And so those are the only two sets of meridians that are not associated with an organ like stomach, heart, spleen. And all you would do is say, is there an imbalance? Is there an imbalance in the stomach meridian? Is there an imbalance in the you know, the bladder or the kidney, you know, that's all you have to do with each of these. Okay, any questions with that? Mm, pretty straightforward stuff. Okay, and uh, we'll move on to um, the last thing is glands. Now, Edgar Casey had some interesting things to say about glands. He thinks that the endocrine, or thought, <laughs> probably still does, that the endocrine system was a pathway to reach and understand God. And he called the gland manifestation then perceptions as major power centers. So the pineal, pituitary, thymus, thyroid, adrenals, and sex glands. So 
uh, that's pretty interesting stuff right there. Um, the glands are involved in renovation, degeneration, and rejuvenation of the cells. I'm sorry I'm giving you a little bit of anatomy lesson, but you need to know these things in order to douse them a little bit. So it's, they also facilitate the production of the potential energy needed in the body. So if someone is having an issue with their pancreas, which is where diabetes um, diabetics have an issue, right? Because the Isle of Langerhans lives in the pancreas and it regulates the sugars in the body. You want to be aware of balancing the pancreas, not only on top of diet and all kinds of other things, but you can do this through working with this subtle body is to balance the pancreas. So let's see here. Okay, let's before we go there, we're going to go, and I want to tell you which glands I'm working with. So I'm working with the adrenal, hypothalamus, pancreas, parathyroid, pineal, pituitary, reproductive, thymus, and thyroid glands. And again, the pineal, you know, you can use that um, north sky energy with the seventh chakra to help clean the pineal gland. You can also brighten up your pineal while you're meditating. That'll do it as well. Uh, and then, of course, when you're dowsing any of these things, um, again, you're going to say, you know, is there an imbalance in any of these glands? Yes or no? It's pretty easy. And then you just run your wire or your pendulum until it stops. Are there any questions about any of these subtle body concepts? Um, I think I'm pretty good on time. I tried to give you as much information as I could without having. <laughs> so um, anything? Okay. Well, I just, I just wanted you to see that I had um, shared my manuscript with um, uh, my friend and um, Cynthia Sue Larson, who you may or may not know, she was a keynote speaker. She's the author of Reality Shifts. And she wrote a beautiful endorsement for it, um, which I really wanted to share with you because the way she wrote it was, it's a comprehensive system of, of an energetic tool that can be used effectively on behalf of others or for your, ourselves with powerful techniques for accessing any seemingly hard to reach places. And I just thought that was really beautiful um, because she's right. This, this subtle body stuff is, can be in hard to reach places and understanding it at the etheric level will help the physical. It'll bridge it into that. Um, physical wellness. So I think, and that's me, <laughs> Dowsing the Etheric Body, there's the book if you're interested. There's a PDF version and a new revised edition soft cover. I sell precision wires. I also teach crystal grid. That's a um, crystal grid that I did as an impromptu for the workshop um, class on Thursday during the break and and that's it and that's how you can reach me and you can go to melindain.com or melindaiversonin.com and um, that's all i think i think we've covered it right any questions comments um, i know i didn't like go into detail of everything but again it's an 8 week course you know which i tried to condense into a 55 minute oh, oh. class. So you can unmute yourselves if anyone wants to make a comment or talk, say anything. I'm here. Unless Tick can unmute you. Um. Melinda, that was great. Thank you so much information. Oh. Woo. Oh, thanks. Sure you? Sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. It's Susan. Hi. Here I <laughs> Thank am again. You. Thank you so much. Susan. Yeah, very really intense and lots of info and uh, gobsmacking, I think, which is why we don't know what to ask at this point. <laughs> yeah, probably. There's a lot of information there. Um, but how to get the slides, uh, Melinda? How do you get the slides? Oh, huh. Well, write me. Write me, um, oh, okay. Melinda at melindain.com, and and uh, let me. I hadn't thought about sharing the slides. 
but um, let me think um, about that. And then you would also mention Pete, somebody, Pete. Pete Warburton? Yeah, uh -huh. that you had a PDF of his. I do, and, and, and that um, is, it should be at PeteWarburton.com. If not yet, write me and I will give you all of, I'll give you the link where you can download all of his papers. I have all of them. Okay. And um, what, how to spell his name? P-E-T-E-W-A-R-B-U-R-T-O-N. To take all his Melinda so so much. Oh, thank you. It's a great pleasure, and I appreciate all the support and love. I can feel it coming through, and um, I look forward to dowsing with all of you in the future. I love how you bring so many different modalities and cultures together. Oh, thank you very much. And by the way, the South and the North are on the medicine wheel. I know something that that Susan Collins very familiar with that. And the medicine wheel, the north and the south sky are part of that medicine wheel in the American Indian culture. Also, I will be at ORI, um, Ozark Research Institute, August 27th, 28, 29. As I'll be the keynote speaker there, and I'll be teaching a three-hour workshop on this work. Yeah, dowsing the biofield, I think it'll be called. So please come and join us in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Yay. Yay. Thank and you fill out your so forms. Much. Fill out your fill out your evaluation forms and um, write me. Write me and I will give you as much information as I can. Um, Melinda at melindain.com. Okay. And if you want a recording wire, I have them too. I have actually one left. And um, so lots of love, everyone. Peace, happiness, happy dowsing. Yay. Thank you for coming. And um, I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you for coming. Okay. Thank Melinda. you. Bye. Bye. See y'all later. <laughs>